In the beginning of a scientific presentation, you want to clarify the scope of the talk. You also want to show the importance of the talk and provide needed background. Often, that background includes details that establish your credibility. Of the over half million hip replacements done in the past year in the United States, 60,000 of them have been revisions, redos, mess-ups and mistakes that could have been avoided if the orthopedic surgeons and the people developing those medical materials had worked more closely to make biomaterials that are safer for our patients. My grandmother is one of those 60,000 people who had to have her hip recalled, and the fact that her health was put at risk because of a commonplace procedure didn't sit right with me. I've heard a lot about hip replacements in the past year from my gran, from family in the medical field, and from doing a little bit of my own research. And I've come to the conclusion that this hip replacement fiasco could have been avoided and can be prevented for the future by developing better biomedical materials. My name is Rachel Perini, and I'm a sophomore in mechanical engineering. As a student in that major, I'm interested in the ways that things work within our body. And so today, I'd like to share a little bit with you about the current methods of hip replacements and how they can be improved. Before moving to the middle of your scientific presentation, you should map your main points in a memorable way. One of the ways in which we could solve the problem of fighting wildfires safely and efficiently is through the use of unmanned aerial vehicles, popularly known as drones. Today, I will begin by discussing how wildfires have grown larger and more destructive in recent years. Then, we will explore how drones can gather information and create communication systems for the firefighters on the ground. Last, I will highlight the superiority of drones over manned aircraft. To keep the audience on track, the best speakers make clear transitions to each main point. To begin, I will talk about how wildfires have grown more destructive in recent years. Wildfires on average are larger than they used to be. This is a graph that shows the number of acres burned in the United States from 1990 to 2012. It was made using statistics published by the National Interagency Fire Center. As you can see, wildfires on average have grown larger. The average wildfire in 2012 burned five times as many acres as the average wildfire in 1990. In addition, a Harvard study predicted that an average wildfire in 2050 would burn twice as many acres as one currently does. Within each main point, the best speakers make smooth transitions from one idea to another. One way to show a shift from one idea to another is through changes in the visual evidence. Another way is through transitional phrases in words spoken. Ryan Homes, which is a very well-established real estate group, provided me with their timeline of how they built a house. So in weeks one through three, this is when the foundation and the footing is put in a house. So bulldozers would be on site, moving the ground, workers would be on site, moving rocks and debris and things like that. Then in weeks four through seven, this is when the house starts to take shape and the workers manually put up the skeleton of the house. This is also when they would install the heating, cooling, electrical, and plumbing systems. Then in weeks seven and eight, the workers are putting in the insulation and the drywall. And finally, in weeks nine through 13, this is what I call the finishing touches of the house. So the workers would put in the flooring, the trimming, the painting the walls, light fixtures, outlets, things like that. So hopefully you could hear as I was describing this process that I was trying to emphasize that a large majority of this is done using manual labor. So like I said, the workers are moving rocks and debris. They're putting up the skeleton of the house. Not to mention the fact that people then come in to inspect the jobs that the workers are doing, all of which is adding to the time it takes to build this house. The best scientific talks are built on assertions. In the best talks, the speaker emphasizes each assertion and supports the assertion with cogent evidence. Moreover, the speaker grounds that evidence in references to credible sources. Since there's such a reliance on manual labor, it comes as no surprise that this is one of the most dangerous jobs there is. We ask them to operate dangerous machinery, we put them in high places. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, in the year 2012, there were 775 worker deaths. And these were attributed to falls, being struck by an object, being trapped between objects, or being electrocuted. Now these four accidents are so common amongst construction workers that they're given a name, the fatal four. For the ending of a scientific presentation, you should do three things. First, restate the main takeaway of the talk. Second, to support that takeaway, 
summarize your main points. Finally, at the very end, provide a sense of closure. Vitamin E polyethylene has allowed my grandma to get back on her feet and start walking again. And if incorporated more into our operating rooms, could help avoid having 60,000 recalled hips in this next coming year. With even more biomedical advancements sure to come in the future, there could be more advancements in the stability and strength of materials, the ease of production, and the longevity of the material. But for now, vitamin E polyethylene is the top competitor in all of those fields, and as we've seen, is very competitive when compared with other materials currently on the market. So maybe by the time that I'm Grant's age, there will be something even better out there for when my hips need to be replaced. But for now, vitamin E polyethylene is the way to go. Thank you.